you know, it's interesting how much stress you put all this under when you bend the uh, when you bend the fuselage like this. Uh, I've just noticed a couple of things that need a little bit of attention. There's one spot right here where the longeron is actually sort of pulled away a little bit from the vertical, so that's why I need to clamp that. Um, I'll get some epoxy in there, get that clamped, and then I noticed right back here, actually the uh, the longeron pulled away from, or not this vertical here, actually pulled away from the plywood a little bit when that bowed. So uh, I've got to get a thin stick and get some uh, get some epoxy in there um, and get that handled. So <laughs> it's like. Uh, that 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 one actually really surprises me, um, but you know the uh, the strength of the lumber um, and the fact that your uh, you know the um, the sides you know they want to they want to go concave and uh, when they when they do that those verticals are uh, uh, trying really hard to to pull away so. Of course, like I said before, once the rest of the skins are on, it, it's a uh, uh, everything starts working together for all of its maximum strength. So, um, but that's uh, maybe that's the pop that I heard, and not the backside of that uh, spark carry through. But either way, um, you know, we just take care of it and uh, and keep moving forward. That's the plan here. So, um, I wanted to show you. Uh, I don't know if you remember when I said before, um, actually, this, according on the uh, half VW plan, this member, RS, which is RS8 now, is supposed to be three quarter by three quarter. And I had planned not to do it with the fuselage side just to keep everything the same size. It was easier to build. And then I've, what I've done is basically taken some mahogany, cut it down to three quarter. Um, and I th this actually in works better in my opinion because um, I can actually capture the longerons right here. So I'm gonna be epoxying this in. And then I'll have the three quarter dimension um, that it's calling out for. And at the same time, um, this will this will um, aid in capturing those longerons and uh, actually makes a stronger assembly um, in my opinion. So um, as you can see what happens with butt joints when you put them under high stress. <laughs> so. Uh, so I've got those I've got those ready to uh, epoxy on just before uh, just before we put the uh, plywood in because I want to get good adhesion all the way around and uh, we'll I'll make something to get some epoxy in that part that popped right there and uh, I'll just thin out a, a stick so I can get in behind there then I'll clamp that at the same time we're clamp and everything else um, yeah all right so um, I didn't I didn't show you I did when I got the clamps off of here this all looks really good there's really nice nice glue uh, all the way across here there is one spot uh, that I saw that uh, didn't get really squeezed out so I'm gonna just drip, drip some epoxy down in there um, so that I can be certain that over the next however long that stuff stays fluid, it'll find its way down in that hole. So uh, one other thing I wanted to mention um, uh, when you're thinking through your sequencing sometimes, one that, one that you don't want to miss if you're building one of these, is you want to make sure you drill this hole through from the inside once you get your plywood on before you put the plywood on the inside because this actually gets plywood un encapsulating it. You want to get that in place. You want to get this hole drilled before you do that so that you can then come to the outside and drill back through. Um, if you don't and you forget about it, <clears throat> you may have a hard time locating that hole. So, All right, cool. So I'm going to get uh, some epoxy uh, mixed up and let's get all this assembly in place. All right. All right, I just took a popsicle stick and I just really thinned it out, <clears throat> which will allow me to uh, get some epoxy in some of these areas here. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> okay, so I'm going to let gravity do its thing back there for a couple minutes before I put a clamp on it. Uh, <clears throat> get this in here and I need to back this light off a little bit um. providing security at the moment. I got to get it out of my way here.
got to take a little bit off of my uh, off of my uh, wedge here. It's bottoming out on me. playing with the wedges to get the back on the center line so that puts us right in the middle and then looking good all the way around um, Squeeze out there. We can tighten up the top a little bit. can staple that in place. So I had to, I had turned the camera off and um, but I still wanted to, to talk you through what I had to do. Um, obviously the, uh, the firewall is uh, epoxied and stapled in place now um, which is phenomenal um, but I had to I had to do a little scrambling um, that uh, because I the the top of the front of the longerons are coming in to the firewall at a different angle than um, than a they're not perpendicular so what I had to do is I actually had to come in and I had to make some wedges real quick uh, so I just on the table saw, just cut some really thin wedges that I could uh, epoxy both sides, and I pushed those in into that little gap that was left um, left there. And uh, and then I use um, I will note that I use quarter inch staples most everywhere. Um, I used five sixteenths on this, and for the top and bottom skins, I'll be using five sixteenths on that as well. Just get a little deeper penetration and. Uh, I think it probably works out works out better so um, I'm gonna just go around real quick and just kind of check check everything and I've already checked for uh, I've already checked to make sure that everything is running um, nice and nice and square so everything looks good um, fuselage sides and uh, it's it's best to check I mean checking the plywood is one thing but Checking on the inside is even better. Um, and I, I just ran my square in there just to make sure those uprights were staying vertical. And uh, yeah, so we're uh, rocking and rolling here. Now the next step is to actually, um, there are uh, a couple cross members um, in here now um, and, a, and another cross member on the bottom of the fuselage. So those I'm going to get cut and uh, get those in place. I think there's three in total, uh, if I'm not mistaken. It's 
it's one on the one on the top two on the bottom um two on the top one on the bottom i think it's one on and two but either way i look at the plan i'll figure that out and actually the plan's right here so it is one uh two this one right here is actually replaced by my plywood firewall so that one we actually don't have to worry about for now although I do have to put in I believe uh, I believe my plan shows uh, it actually doesn't show what goes in behind here in between the longerons on this side it shows the RS9 here so I think what I'm probably gonna do is on the back side of the firewall I'm just gonna go ahead and put a piece of RS9 in place of this RS6 um, that it shows here so and then on the uh, bottom of the fuselage I just have the cross member that goes there and then I have this RS6 that's actually back here at 57 and a quarter to the front edge. All right, so I've cut uh, I've cut my top and bottom uh, uh, RS nines that I've decided to use on the back side of the firewall here. So um, those just go in um, like so. It's going to go in here like that. And so I can get these uh, epoxied uh, in place. I have one on the top, one on the bottom. I I probably could have used the RS6, but it just makes more sense to me to go ahead and use the um, RS9. It's picking up a little bit of a uh, little bit of weight, but um, the plan doesn't really say what to do, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I got to get a little bit more wax paper under here, and then. Uh, I've got a couple blocks I'm going to put in here. Um, I just want to make sure that I don't I don't end up pushing the uh, staples out when I put a block on the back side. So I'll get these two blocks um, in place, and uh, and then when I go on the back side, since this is just bowed a little bit from the pressure, I'll end up pushing a block on the back side to make sure that we got good. Uh, uh, good detachment so the top I'm not as concerned about because I can see that and keep track of what's going on so uh, yeah so uh, I'll get some more epoxy mixed up and we'll get these uh, we'll get these two glued in here all right all right so I've got uh, I got this uh, here's the top one the top one's in place and uh, I see I've got some extra extra glue there I'm going to catch real quick. It's just dripping down, not doing any good at all. So now I left this, uh, I left this just a little bit, uh, a little bit proud um, because I'm going to actually uh, shape that, um, this bottom piece to kind of match the curve of the uh, longerons. So, uh, so it's actually sticking up a little bit, but I'll get that shaped in where I want it. And uh, you can see when I route it, I actually left, actually left some extra material here. So uh, I'll be just curving that in to fare into the, the other pieces that are going here. And then I got the bottom one in, and like I had mentioned, I got, uh, I got the blocks on the other side to make sure that I didn't push the uh, firewall out and I just got them where they were right in the corner so and so I knew those were gonna stay now that's all nice and solid so once that uh, sets up this uh, front end is permanent <laughs> it's not going anywhere so uh, the, the cool thing I noticed is uh, the um, half BW front end is actually uh, 
13 and a half. Um, so the amount that is left to pull here is actually very easy um, to get these two into that. Uh, to, let me say that again. It certainly helps that there's nothing on them currently, but um, to get these into a 13 and a half is actually pretty, uh, it's taking very little effort. So uh, we will, um, we'll be working on that whenever this finishes setting up. So, and now I'll get that other RS6 member. Uh, since I took care of this one and this one with RS9, um, I can go back and now pick up this RS6 that's actually at 57 and an eighth, 57 and a quarter, and to the front edge, and it's actually, uh, I'll just measure back from this 52 and an eighth to 57 and a quarter, and then I'll get that marked out, and then we can get that epoxied in place, and then uh, the next... Uh, the next step will be to pull this tail together. So, all right, let me get that RS6 um, marked and cut and we'll epoxy that in place. And then that can be joining the rest of the structural members. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's going really good. And I think that'll probably wrap it up for me today. So uh, I, uh, uh, yeah, we'll see. How much time I have after that but all right cool so that's in place and I am uh, I'm in danger of getting a pretty long video here so but I just want to do one more thing um, before I stop for today and that is uh, I want to put the plywood on the inside of the seat belt mount and you can see I've marked the line that's one inch forward of this uh, member with the hole in it so now I just have to cut some plywood um, that fits in there. It's a uh, RS-562. And if we go to our sheet here, we can see that 562 is a five and a quarter eighth inch. Uh, I think it says, this is a specified birch. 562 is birch, yeah. So five and a quarter, five and a quarter wide, and uh, it uh, has to be at least, I'm just gonna take a quick measurement here and see, it's gotta be five and a quarter by at least five inches, so. All right, so I'll grab some birch from down underneath the table here, eighth inch, and we'll get a couple of uh, five and a quarter by five inch pieces cut. All right. Okay, so I've verified that that actually has to be birch. So I'm gonna have to, uh, um, I think I've got like two hours. I can make a run to uh, Aircraft Spruce before they close and uh, I can place my order now. They'll have it ready when I get there. But I've got to pick up another small piece of, uh, of uh, eighth inch birch um, so that I can get that as it should be. And uh, yeah, all right, so uh, I'm going to uh, wrap this one up. Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, checking out the video. Major step today, so I'm glad you were along for the ride and I will catch you later.